If you've ever had a moment in Plant Parenthood where you felt stressed, overwhelmed, full of anxiety, or doubtful, I sincerely hope this video helps. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. Plant friends, Plant Parent overwhelm is so real. I think every person who, have, who is actively growing a plant collection has had that moment where we start teetering between like really enjoying the amount of plants that we're bringing in and filling our homes with plants and then like teetering over to really starting to get stressed about oh my god I can't keep up with the watering schedule I don't know their names they don't look good they look cluttered like am I being crazy like why can't I stop thinking about plants I feel like so many people in our community have gone through that I definitely went through that. Um, I've gone through that many times in my last, you know, three plus years of plant parenthood. And I think it's something that needs to be talked about and something that needs to be understood as okay and normal. And at the end of December, as we're looking into 2021, I really couldn't think of a better episode video that I wanted to make for you that's just like dealing with with processing overwhelm and, and giving our whole community some tools from this amazing conversation that I had um, to, to deal with it and process it and understand that it's totally okay. So I know I've shared several clips from this epic episode I did with Cyril from Cyril Cybernated, Phoebe from Welcome to the Jungle Home, and Lucretia from Solstice to Plants, but at the end of this epic one and a half hour podcast episode, which I highly suggest you go and giving it a listen after watching this video, I got really real with them and I shared about six months into Plant Parenthood as I was growing my urban jungle with Billy. Billy asked me to go on a plant pause. My plant collection was getting really out of control and and he asked me to go on a plant pause. I went on a plant pause for about six to eight months with a few ex exceptions and it really changed it really changed my life or it didn't really change my life. It really changed my ability ability to care for plants successfully from a really good emotional place. And so let me know if that's something that interests you. I've never like specifically talked about the plant pause, but I'd be happy to make a video talking about, you know, the steps I made to to do the plant pause, execute it and you know, have it be successful. But anyway, I got real with some of my plant friends in this podcast episode and I thought they gave me some great advice and actually spurred this really interesting conversation. So I wanted to share it with you in hopes that maybe something that one of them says maybe, you know, plants a little seed in your brain. Maybe you make some connections or or, you know, just helps. That's all. That's all I'm really here to do is just help help our community keep blooming and keep growing. So with that being said, please be my plant friend, like this video, subscribe to the channel, check this podcast out, and leave me a comment below about how you've experienced plant parent overwhelm, if you have, and the tools that you've used and the strategies that you've used to overcome it. So without further ado, here's the conversation. I want to get real with you guys right now and share something that I went through when I was like getting through, uh, beginning my plant collection. And I know that so many listeners in this community have reached out and talked to me about it. And I know it's something we all struggle with. So I collect, I went from zero to 60, like a crazy, I like went crazy. Something switched in my like very uh, addictive prone brain when I started collecting plants. And I think in three months in like 500 square feet, I had 60 plants, no organization. They were like everywhere. Um, and it was starting to feel unhealthy and I wasn't really able to um, care for them correctly because also my knowledge hadn't like met up with me yet. So I was still like kind of unsure what types of plants I had. I was still Googling. A lot of them weren't happy. And so my boyfriend, my now fiance put me on a plant pause and it's like the best thing that ever happened. I'm so thankful that he was living with me at that time because I think if I hadn't had him to kind of hold the mirror up to me, I think I would have just kept doing this. And I think I would have ultimately probably ended up killing all the plants because it was just a really unhealthy state. And then also plant care started getting stressful and not mm. joyful. And that's why I'm here with, for plants. That's why I'm making this podcast, to like bring joy mm. to people with plants. So I think it's also, I think you shouldn't be too harsh on yourself when you mm -hmm. kill a plant. Like people totally. assume that I don't kill plants. Say and I'm that. like, no, we all do. Like we yeah. all need everybody, plants. if you don't kill plants, you are not a true person who loves plants. <laughs> You're not trying hard Period. enough. <laughs> yeah. You haven't tried at all. Yeah. You I haven't think, tried. Exactly. Like totally. I feel like if you, I, I think it's also, you know, if you kill it, 
you know, you can be sad about it, but then it's also like, it's, it's like, a mis- you know, it's like any life mistake. If you make a mistake, you can try again. And if you try again, you've learned from that mistake and you're, it's gonna, yes. you're gonna do so much like better. And like, like, yeah, yeah, I've had, I had, I've had mistakes with like certain plants like Calatheas, you know, I finally, um, got one of my Calatheas to actually thrive. It was suffering with like mealybugs. Like I'm a rescue plant mom. I love rescuing plants, even though they're like on the dying breath with the three leaves. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, I'll take it. (laughs) Literally, I love rescuing plants if I can. And, um, and yeah, like just, and, and I, I just love, again, like problem solving and like, oh no, I, I want that challenge to like, you know, revive you back. And like my Monstera, you know, that was a rescue plant many, many years, like three years ago. And um, I, now it's six foot tall and I got it as like a mm. three leaf, like small little, like dying, like, ooh, wilting leaf cutting. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. There are some plants that you can bring back, but like you said, it, it's, you have to let go of that guilt of a plant dying. And mm-hmm. I mean, I've easily killed good 10, 15 plants easily. And yeah. it's just been learning what works for you, what doesn't work for you. That's how I, I learned that there are certain ferns that I can keep alive, but like a bird's nest fern didn't realize that it's people usually kill it because they water it wrong. They water in the middle and you don't water that plant in the middle because that's where it'll rot. But it's things like that that you have to do things to learn. What do you do with the plant? What don't you do with the plant? Um, over, most people honestly kill their plants by overwatering. They drown them to death. And it's, it's just they're like, well, it looked like it. Oh, they over love it or they touch it. it all the time or they're moving it or they're in every damn picture on Instagram. And I'm like, that's why your ficus is die. Cause you don't just leave it alone. And, and that's and a lot of plants. They don't really like us. If you think about where, the, where do they grow? Most monsters are growing under trees attached to trees. Yep. That's where they grow. And where do we put them out in the sun and then wonder why, why is my plant burnt? Why does it look like that? Cause it's growing in a forest under big trees and everything that's what it's doing and you're putting it in conditions it's just not used to so well that's... really do the research on those plants to really learn what does it have what do you need and and also just l- learn what your families of plants are that you love for me that's philodendrons pothos zz plants snake plants and then I love hoyas because there's so many different types of hoyas I'll see something I'm like what is that like it's a Hoya. I'm like, is it? Mine, I just got <laughs> my first flower bloom this week. Did you? Oh yeah, you gotta check out her Instagram. Her Instagram Yay! reel. It's I unreal. Did. I did like a little watch party. Every day I was like, I was checking up on it. Um, and it just didn't bloom. And I was like, is it now? Is it now? And then finally it like bloomed and I ca- luckily caught it on a time lapse. So I have this like that beautiful is video. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm also learning, you know, it's also like, I, I have so many plants, but I'm learning all about new Hoyas and how they bloom, how long they take and like how they're, um, I'm sorry, like they're, you know, they, they have different personalities compared to other like tropical plants too. So it's like, it's also a learning process. Totally. Um, Cyril, did you, do you have anything you want to say to, uh, any, any plant parent out there feeling a little overwhelmed right now? Well, um, one, it is a journey. Um, you will learn a lot in the process. Don't be ashamed. It, I, I think we've stressed it enough. Don't be ashamed. Um, you could refer to how others were successful in their own journeys, but it doesn't mean that what works for them would also work for you. You would really only find out once you go on that journey by yourself as well. Yeah. And it's individualized. It's you know something that's subjective. Um, So when people always reach out like, hey, how do you manage to do this and that? I would be like, okay, where do we begin? Like, do we talk (laughs) about growing conditions, um, the plant type? It's like a very broad topic. You have like an hour or two to sit down and discuss this. But the bottom line is, you know, your growing conditions, mine are different. Even if we get the same plant at the same time at the same plant shop, I guess, each specimen will be different and your attack or your strategy would also be different. So that's 
you guess I guess you just do it one plant at a time or like maybe 10 every week like how most of us were at the beginning of our plant journey it's overwhelming like I just want to hoard them because I've seen them everywhere on Instagram mm-hmm. I've seen this plant influencer have this it's so beautiful I want this too but we always like forget the fact that oh where does this person live how are their mm-hmm. growing conditions? Like, although most of us, as much as we want to showcase our plans, like how our kids would be dolled up for a graduation photo, you know, we, that's how we do them on Instagram. I enjoy styling so them. Right. Right. But the reality yes. is they won't always look like that. They would always also look raggedy. It depends on the season. Sometimes you have to doll them up every now and then because they don't always look instagrammable unfortunately and that's okay and that's I guess okay this is gonna be a that's okay session yeah and that's <laughs> okay i love this thank you guys all for being so real with us and all these amazing tips and i think i just want to close this out by saying you know we all have a different amount of plants that we have there are some people where three plants is going to be their max and that's where they're comfortable and there are some people where 300 or Summer Rain Oaks 1000 is where they're comfortable and none of the numbers actually mean anything. It's always Mm -hmm. fun to talk about, but what really means the most is whatever amount of plants you have, they're making you happy and they're not Mm -hmm. stressing you out. And if they're stressing you out, just like pause a minute and reassess Mm -hmm. and take all these tips that everybody gave you. And also know, like Lucretia said in the beginning, like it's cool to let go of your plants if you need to. I hope this conversation helped you guys. I just think that These conversations I know I've had privately with friends, but, you know, I hadn't really had publicly until episode 40-something of my podcast where we did Your Brain on Plants, and I interviewed a neuroscientist all about what literally chemically happens in our brains as we start to care for plants and grow our collections and, like, the the addiction, dopamine, serotonin release that happens... Our whole community really responded to it and it made me realize that this is not just something I personally went through and I'm not like the crazy person that is obsessively thinking about plants all the time. Like this is a community related thing. So I hope that conversation inspired you. I highly encourage like whether or not you feel overwhelmed, I think every plant parent should go on a plant pause at some point. It was super helpful to me and I think that I am more joyful with my plants now because of it. And if you're currently going through some overwhelm right now, whether it's plant related or not really, as we're just looking at 2020 and what the heck it's done to us. And I think we're all very excited to go into 2021. I just wanted to say you're doing so wonderfully. You're doing great. You're exactly where you need to be. I'm sure it doesn't look like where you thought it would be. I know for me, sitting in this temporary home in the midst of a move, having left New York City, canceling my wedding, rescheduling my wedding, Broadway getting closed, I mean, I don't, nothing I'm looking at looks like what I thought it would be, but I'm so thankful for it. And I hope you are. And I hope that amidst the insanity that this year was, that you too can see some moment of appreciation or positivity or light um, when reflecting on 2020. And just know that when it comes to Planned Parenthood, no one's collections are as curated as they look on Instagram. No one's collections are as curated as they look as these beautifully edited videos. You know, we all go through these moments, overwhelm, uh, doubt, anxiety. It's also kind of all, all part of Planned Parenthood, right? seasons we're seasonal we have seasons of growth and intensity and excitement and we have seasons of dormancy and pause and um change so that was a ramble but those are my thoughts (laughs) as we look beyond us at 2020 and forward for 2021 so I love you all so much. I hope you have beautiful New Year's and I cannot wait to help you keep blooming and keep growing in 2021. Do 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 do